good job, it's your boy Ross. Back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out Vince McMahon unhappy with the WWE, WWE troll Ryback, WWE done with AEW stars and other wrestling news. Uh, I want to know what Vince is not happy about, considering he can control and create and destroy whatever he wants. So what is he not happy with? Let's also find out about you know find out about that and of course I'm sure Ryback has some great things to say <laughs> he always tends to say some things where you just be like what are you talking about Ryback so I'm interested to see what's about to happen here appreciate all the love and support man and let's see what it is WrestleMania is here about. back with another video now it's time to honor Randy Orton's 20-year career in the WWE course, as Riddle hosts an anniversary celebration however will Orton's celebration go off without a hitch well, join us now as we look at this week's edition of the red brand as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including wwe not interested in aew stars after all vince mcmahon always unhappy with wwe's product the wwe troll ryback on raw and much oh. more be sure to subscribe and hit so they trolled ryback hmm, interesting that notification bell for daily wrestling see. videos and follow us on facebook for exclusive list now, as always, we won't recap the matches. I was thinking maybe Ryback said something about WWE because he always has something great to say about WWE. But just provide you with the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one, a touching tribute. Now, last night's 20-year anniversary celebration of Randy Orton's career was nothing short of magnificent as the WWE combined a touching tribute to the legend killer's career while also incorporating the age-old wrestling trope of a wrestler trying to reign on another's parade. Yep. The WWE excelled with this segment, honoring Orton's legacy while also incorporating his current friendship with Riddle and bringing in Cody Rhodes, whose early years as Orton's protege and legacy were fundamental to Cody's growth. Mm. They acknowledged the past and the WWE even squeezed Ezekiel into the segment as he talked about growing up watching Randy Orton matches with his brother Elias. Bro, I'm sorry. It's just, you expect me to just suspend my disbelief that Ezekiel is Elias' brother. Maybe when I was a kid, oh yeah, I would have believed that. But come on, bro. I, it's actually just funny to me. It's just, I, I can't even... I can't get mad. I just be like, all right, bro. It's wrestling, whatever. <laughs> yes, nice. Bringing <laughs> Seth, Kevin Owens, and the Usos was a good way to set up a main event match without tarnishing Orton's celebration. Clearly, the WWE put thought and effort into this segment, a reminder that the creative team can produce good quality content. Now, watching Orton's anniversary celebration, we couldn't help but ask, has it really been 20 years since Randy Orton made his yeah, main roster man. debut? It seems like only yesterday that the WWE Universe was trying to figure out what to make of the upstart third generation wrestler. Yeah. Fast forward to the I'm present and by. Orton is now a beloved figure in the WWE, a locker room leader, and quite frankly, doing the best work of his career. I've said that before. Uh, Randy Orton is, he is still at the top of his game, bro. He's still at the top of his game. He still looks like he has plenty left to give us I am really interested. I, I I just I it's coming. Riddle, Randy Orton, the feud is coming. And hopefully this is able to take Riddle to the next level. Because Randy's been to the mountaintop. It's all about getting Riddle to that next level. So the only thing is is he has the bro gimmick. So it's like it's kind of hard to take him as seriously as a competitor because he got the bro gimmick. He's so that's his gimmick. I'm so lackadaisical and chill. But at the same time, when you're trying to be at the top of the card, potentially trying to win some more championships, you got to have some seriousness about you. So hopefully at whenever they do split and ha they have their feud, Riddle is able to come out benefiting from it because Randy will be fine. Riddle is really, if they want to make him that next star on Monday Night Raw, they got to do it correctly. And Randy Orton's the best way to potentially get him over. Yeah. Number two, the return of Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali is finally back and it's great to see him getting into a program from mm -hmm. the get-go. In this case, a rivalry with newly turned heel Tommaso Ciampa. Well, actually just Ciampa. Mom. Which I just don't get. Why do they do... Th what is up with the... the the name changes. They just all they did was just take out the Tommaso part. What? Why they just went? Why? What? What? What was wrong with Tommaso Ciampa? And you just 
now keeping Chompa. I don't, I don't, I don't know, bro. It's like, damn, near any NXT star, they change the name, they delete part of their name. It's just, it doesn't make sense. I will never understand it. Some people say it's not that big of a deal, but it's like, if it's not, what's the point of even doing it? It doesn't do anything to their character. It's just like, okay, I don't know. More on that later. While the WWE couldn't resist bringing up Ali's unhappiness with the WWE, which actually we didn't mind, he looked good against The Miz and hopefully will do more than count the lights before disappearing for several more months. Yeah. Number three, Enter the Empress. In all these segments I did see off camera, I just didn't record it. The, mo the main one I wanted to record was obviously the Randy Orton uh, segment. So a lot of these stuff I did see off camera and a lot of you guys were you know happy with what happened with raw you got you guys uh from people in the discord and in the clutch of discord and just people in the comment section of my video reacting to the randy orton segment a lot of you guys said you enjoyed monday night raw and it was enjoyable for you so in the segments that i did see was pretty entertaining so that's not a bad thing oscar is back and let's hope the empress of tomorrow's feud with becky lynch isn't the peak of her raw return oscar no. is clearly championship material and yes. at some point she should be chasing the red brand's women's championship yes. she will need to turn heel however if she wrestles bianca belair as a face face dynamic it's unlikely to work between these two yeah number four this was more of a raw after mania show a last night's Raw was fantastic, was and it seemed about, more like a post-WrestleMania Raw than the lackluster post-WrestleMania show we got a few see, weeks back. The WWE over-delivered last night, and while there was the usual 24-7 nonsense, it didn't take up too much time. And that's the thing. I watched the post-WrestleMania uh, post show. That shit was boring. Outside of Cody, that shit was boring. And it seems like you guys enjoyed this show better, so I don't know. WWE, they, they have a chance to book in entertaining shows. It's just their booking is la lazy. It's like they, they either do rematches or just nonsensical booking of matches or the matches don't even matter, maybe like two minutes long. Like They have opportunities to book some great stuff. They just choose not to. Last night's show featured an incredible amount of continuity, including highlights of Orton's career, as well as Kevin Owens telling Seth Rollins he hasn't forgotten about his actions last week when KO wrestled Cody. And number five, Bianca wins strong again. A last night's Raw Championship defense was a good match that continued the WWE's build-up for Bianca Belair. Belair looked strong as she dealt with Sonya Deville's attempts to stack the deck as well as the outside interference of Carmella and Zelina Vega. This was nothing short of a three-on-one handicap match and Belair managed to beat the odds, looking fantastic along the way. Which is good. A push is an example of long-term booking paying off. So. I will admit that we had our doubts about Belair's SummerSlam title loss oh, to Becky man. Lynch and seemingly endless efforts to regain the belt. Things looked bleak for the EST for a while as she seemed destined to come up short against Becky Lynch in her quest for the Raw Women's Championship. However, her eventual win was worth it, paying off big time by establishing her as a tireless competitor who refuses to cut corners to win. Now the WWE is taking the next step in boosting Belair, portraying her as a fearless champion who overcomes any obstacles. Which but that was good. a good what about the bad is number one, the WWE name game. Uh, WWE's yeah, I'm going to say this. It just doesn't make sense, bro. It, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, but I think damn near almost every NXT call-up within this year so far has had some type of major name change. For whatever reason, I don't know. Let me know if I'm wrong on that a stat, but I feel like almost every NXT call-up so far this year to the main roster has had some type of name change. Maybe one or two didn't, but... Most of them have. It's just, it's just ridiculous, bro. It has become a joke now on Twitter of who will come up to NXT and how will they change their name? What's going to be their name? His name game was on display again last night as Tommaso Ciampa is apparently now just being referred to as Ciampa. Ciampa. It's obvious that WWE thinks its viewers are idiots and bound to get confused trying to remember the first and last names of its various superstars. It's not hard. Even if the WWE is changing its wrestler's name for intellectual property reasons, there are better ways to go about it than to just dropping the name. Number two, Ezekiel the Warrior? Now that we've established that Ezekiel is Elias' younger brother, it looks like fans will have to ask if he's related to the Ultimate Warrior. 
or at least former WCW wrestler, the Renegade. Ezekiel's arm tassels make him look like a bad Ultimate Warrior cosplay, and yeah. while Ezekiel's ring attire needs plenty of improvement, as it's difficult to recall such a bland outfit since Tony Nese, the tassels kinda need to go. Maybe the WWE should have gone with a Macho Man Randy Savage tribute for Zeke instead. Number 3. The Demon's Disappointing Descent and it's official, Finn Balor has gone from former Universal Champion and the man who- Oh yeah, I, I did see him lose to uh, to uh, Damian Priest with Edge sitting at ringside in his <laughs> throne of a chair or whatnot. Uh, I forgot what they called themselves. Um, Judgment Day or something like that. That's, that's the name in their group. Judgment Day or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. I'm pretty sure you guys know what it is. I believe it's something like that. They're called the Judgment Day or something, something related to Judgment. That's the vibe that they give. They they judge others in WWE, and I, I understand it's to really give Damian Priest's win back from Finn Balor taking the championship from him. But at the end of the day, as well. Finn Balor, he has fallen so far. And it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know if they can really rebuild his momentum. And the simple fact that he didn't really do much with the United States Championship when he had it. So, it's like, I don't know. You're building up Priest to align with Edge. But at the same time, Finn Balor is kind of is kind of in a downward spiral. So, I'm not sure. Who came close to defeating Roman Reigns to the official job guy on Raw. As disappointing as Balor's US Championship reign was, it looks like him yeah. counting the lights for Damian Priest last night is a hint of things to come. Balor seems like the ideal opponent for Edge and Priest's new group Judgment Day and could help okay, AJ Styles even the odds against the heels. While regrettably the WWE has decided to employ Balor as a jobber to the stars and quickly destroyed whatever credibility his character ever had. Now there was nothing downright ugly about last night's show as the red brand took things up a notch, incorporating matches, interviews and talk segments into an entertaining three hours instead of the typical Raw Endurance Challenge. Raw things look to be heating up with two interesting <laughs> returns, developing undercard storylines and leaving undercard That's stars into programs with main eventers, such as Ezekiel's challenge. inclusion into the main event alongside Cody and RK That's, Bro. The WWE funny, bro. even squeezed in a cameo from WWE Hall of Fame McCain, which is definitely something we weren't expecting last night. What do you guys think of the red brand this week? Let us know in the comments down below. <laughs> now, let's move on to the news. Raw endurance challenge. That, it is an endurance challenge watching Raw every week. <laughs> That's funny. Now, first story looks at WWE not interested in AEW stars. A topic in the news today is a report concerning recent rumors of the WWE's interest in bringing back a tag team it tried to keep under contract two years ago. But are they interested in bringing back current AEW performers FTR who worked in the WWE as a revival? Well, we discuss the WWE's apparent interest in bringing the dynamic duo back once I've been, the AEW- I've definitely been seeing rumors of maybe uh, WWE trying to get them back. I have been seeing it all over Twitter. Actually, contracts expire, but now Ringside News is reporting that doesn't seem to be the case. Steve Carey of Ringside News tweeted, this is going to make some people happy and others not so much. We were told that WWE has no interest in bringing back FTR. They tried to get him back through Edge, but there is no interest. And they're mm. seen as mid-carders who just complain both internally and to the media. Mm. Now they reported that when they reached out to the tenured member of the backstage team, they were told that FTR are not seen as appealing to a worldwide audience past hardcores who are too busy giving star ratings for matches. Oh just to keep God, things into perspective, the WWE threw a small fortune at the revival to stay in the promotion, they, they so the did. idea that they're not welcome back may be a case of sour grapes by some in the WWE. Next up, Vince McMahon always and Damn, the way they just said that is like basically only the hardcore fans care about them. We don't give a damn about them. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> damn. Happy with the WWE product? Now, funny story is making the rounds concerning Mr. McMahon and his opinion of the WWE product. Ringside News claimed in a tweet that a recent report said that Vince McMahon sees several superstars as miscast and there'll be a few switches between heel and babyface. Hmm. We were told there is always a discussion to turn people. Vince McMahon is also always unhappy with things and constantly changing. Hmm. The WWE product speaks for itself as fans have seen numerous changes by Vince McMahon throughout the years, along with reports of last-minute rewrites for yeah. television and even pay-per-view programming. 
Sadly, McMahon's micromanagement has led to a weaker product in the eyes of many fans, as while there are occasional glimmers of hope, such as this week's Raw, things inevitably slide into the gutter due to too much interference and inconsistency. Yep. Here's the thing. Vince, he has the ultimate power to, you know, change up whatever he wants to change up as he sees fit. And a lot of the changes that he do, it's not really for the betterment of the show. He may think it is, but once it happens, it's like, uh, this was not, this was not the go. Like, I don't know. I, I, to be honest with you, what's the point of having all these writers if you're just going to change it up anyway? Because you don't like what's happening. So you're going to change it up. And you're going to continuously change it up. And it's not helping people get over or established as someone that we should care about outside of Roman Reigns. So it's like, I don't know, man. It's like, I, I really think Vince should put in the trust that, of the people that he's hired to write these shows. You know, at least give them a, a fair chance before you start deleting stuff and have things make sense. Because you can tell sometimes when... Oh, this is Vince booking because it's just it's 50 50 booking sometimes or it doesn't make sense or it could tell it seemed rushed and not thought out. It's like, I don't know, man. I, I, Vince, Vince sometimes need to take a step back. That's just my personal opinion. Sometimes he needs to let the writers that he's paying all this money for come up with something and allow the wrestlers to come up with something, too, and just give it a chance. If it don't work, it don't work. Next up, did WWE troll Ryback on Raw? Huh. The big man V's reign of destruction continued on Raw as he yeah. destroyed enhancement talent Sammy too. Smothers on the 25th he, he April. Now him. some fans are wondering whether the WWE had some fun at the expense of chronic complainer Ryback. Several huh. fans took to social media following Smothers' unfortunate run-in with Veer, who actually also looked like Tim the Tapman, pointing out what they <laughs> saw. <laughs> he do look like Tim the Tapman. <laughs> He definitely does. There's a resemblance between Ryback and Smothers. One fan tweeted, when did Ryback unretire? retire <laughs> well, he did have an unusual resemblance to Ryback. It's impossible to say whether this was a coincidence or WWE's way of sticking it to Ryback, a disgruntled wrestler whose litany of complaints against WWE outrivals that of even CM Punk. Do you think they look alike? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> he is like a Ryback light. <laughs> he is. I, you know what's funny? I wouldn't put it past WWE events and all of them because they they don't care for Ryback. I'm I'm still just disgusted with his comments after Triple H had to come out and say he had to retire, and he, he made it about himself. It was a it was a backhanded compliment. That was that was lame. That was super lame. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did do something like this, and he got destroyed in the process. It's whatever. It is what it is. All all I'm saying is, Ryback, he's definitely one of the disgruntled exes that haven't truly moved on, but they said they moved on. That's Ryback for you. It's down below. And finally, Super Bad Bunny. Alas, I've but been not least, hearing about this. Bad Bunny apparently isn't done with the grappling game, but it may not be in the way you think. Yeah. Sony Pictures has revealed that the rapper and occasional WWE superstar will play a character from the Spider-Man mythos in an upcoming film. Mm -hmm. Sony Pictures tweeted this announcement. A wrestle talks Taylor Sanchez provided background on the El Muerte character. In the comics, El Muerte, originally a Spider-Man antagonist, is a wrestler who had superpowers derived from his magical mask passed down to him from his family. The character is a competent wrestler without the mask, but gains super strength and endurance when wearing the face covering. It'll be interesting to see whether Bad Bunny returns to WWE in order to promote the film, oh, you possibly know he wrestling will. as El Morte. But there you have it, folks. Oh, a review of this week's Raw as well as the one. will, bro. And this is a double win win for everybody because if it's part of the gimmick, part of the character, you know he's going to come back as, as that character for the movie. To promote the movie, everybody's gonna get a bag, and you know what? I don't have a problem with it because he's actually pretty goddamn good in a wrestling ring. Who would have thought Bad Bunny would be actually entertaining in a wrestling ring? That's pretty amazing. So I think that would be cool. I hope it does happen. We'll probably see it once the movie's about to come out or whatnot. You, you know, it's gonna be some cross promotion because. Vince is not passing up that good dollar. He's not passing up that dollar dollar bill, y'all. But hey, man, comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this week's Monday Night Raw? I saw a lot of positive reviews. I saw a lot of, you know, interesting things from the clips that I didn't check out on 
on air or whatnot you know the the uh eight man tag was pretty good like there's a lot of things that they did correct on monday night raw this week so that's not bad so comment down below let me know if you guys enjoyed monday night raw this week appreciate all love and support road to 80k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace